We've got record-breaking performances in track and field. And men's basketball is going for the conference sweep. All this and more coming up on the Penguin Rundown. Welcome in, everybody. This is the Penguin Rundown. We're your hosts this week, Chris Clell, alongside with the phenomenal Dom Joseph. Oh, easy, Chris. Dom, it's been a easy. little while. i got to get out of my system. Oh, you know? Lord have mercy. Well, we've missed you. I, I will missed, give you that. I we've missed, missed you, too. You. Uh, just uh, end of fall semester, I was here. And then uh, we all took a break for, for winter break. And then mm -hmm. coming back for the spring semester, getting back in the swing of things. You, yep. you know what I mean. You know I know what, what you're mean. talking about, Chris. I go here, too. Yeah, how's, uh, how's, <laughs> <laughs> how's so your far, uh, spring semester? So far, so good. Yeah, so, far, well, so far, so good on the yeah. spring semester? Yeah, so far, so good. Nothing to complain about. A lot of sports, though, which is very good. Absolutely. Keeping me busy. And we're going to start with some women's basketball. Let's hear it. The women's basketball team had five days to prepare for their road matchup against the Cleveland State Vikings. It was a hard-fought battle for Youngstown State, but the night ended with a 66-52 win over their Horizon League foe. Freshman Chelsea Olsen dropped 26 points along with eight rebounds during the game, while senior India Benjamin did what she does best and distributed out seven assists. Youngstown State sits at 7-12 on the season, 3-5 in Horizon League play. Be sure to tune in tonight as the Penguins take on the Northern Kentucky Norse in the Beagley Center at 7 p.m. The Penguins will also play Saturday at 1 p.m. in the Beagley Center as they host the Wright State Raiders. After losing its last four games, the YSU men's basketball team returned to its winning ways with a dominating performance over IUPUI. Cam Morris led all scores with 23 points, notching his sixth 20-plus point contest this season. The senior was just one of four players who finished in double figures, but the story of the night went to defense. The Penguins scored 23 points off of 16 turnovers. In addition, YSU had more offensive rebounds than the Jaguars had total rebounds. Tonight, Coach Calhoun and company will head to the Midwest to take on Milwaukee. Tip-off is set for 8 p.m. Now, Dom, you had YSU's first matchup with the IUPUI this season, IUPUI's first year in the Horizon League. Yep. What did you take away from this game? Well, it was a rude awakening for IUPUI. You talk about the tenacity of the Penguins coming into this game. They played their hearts out, and it was nonstop for all 40 minutes of the game, and this was huge for the team coming off a big win for them after a loss to UIC. Absolutely. You had against, after the loss against UIC, Coach Calhoun commented after the game that they weren't where they needed to be, right. uh, not only offensively but defensively as well. He couldn't press for, as, for the 40 minutes that they would like to. They weren't really close to where his style was. But then after Saturday night, he had the 23 points off of 16 turnovers. And we, they went full court press about 90% of the game. And Coach Cahoon said afterwards that was as close as they were to his style of play. So game by game, this team's getting closer to uh, this kind of mentality, this full court press mentality. Right. So look forward to seeing them play against Milwaukee. We're going to move on to bowling now. All right. The past weekend, the bowling team traveled to Reading, PA, to compete in a three-day tournament at the KU Invitational. After losing their first three matches on Friday, the team battled back to win two matches before the day was over. Then on Saturday, sophomore Emily Dietz had a career day as she bowled a career-high score of 227 against sixth-ranked Delaware State to close out day two. Finally, on Sunday, the Gwyns won a pair of best-of-seven bracket matches, including a comeback win in their final match after being down three games to one to St. Francis, Brooklyn. Why she would go on to win the next three games to secure the win. The Penguins finished the tournament 19th and will now be off until they compete at the Crusader Classic February 9th through the 11th. More than 1,200 athletes packed inside the Watts last Friday for the YSU College Invitational. The Penguins had a field day with a total of 16 top five finishes on the day. Due to time constraints, we narrowed it down to the top six performances of the day. Senior Janie Corbett stealed first place in the shot put with a throw of 15.78 meters on her third attempt of the day. Of the day. Then sophomore Jalea Elliott led the pack in a tight 60 meter dash, placing first with a time of 7.61 seconds, winning by one one hundredth of a second. Next, senior Keishana Burks outran not one, not two, not three, but make that four pit sprinters to come away with a victory in a 200 meter dash with a time of 24.74 seconds. Later, senior Amber Ells turned on the Jets in the 60 meter hurdles, taking first place with a 38 hundredth of a second with a winning time of 8.56 seconds. Then, junior Chad Zala put his fleet on display as always coming away with the first place finish in the 60 meter high hurdles with a final time of 7.77 seconds. His third win in three outings this season. And last but not least, 
junior Abby Jones. Not only did Jones claim the top spot in the high jump Friday night, but she also became the school's new high jump record holder. Jones cleared the height of 1.74 meters on her third and final attempt at that height. Jones had cleared 1.72 and 1.73 in previous outings back in December. The jump also set a facility record for the Watson and Trestle training site. The men's tennis team had their season opener this weekend against Duquesne at the Alpha Tennis and Fitness of Pittsburgh. The Gwens won three single matches against the Dukes, but then dropped two out of the next three doubles matches. The men's team will be having their first home match of the season this Friday as they face DePaul tomorrow, January 26th. Serving over to the women's side, they also competed in the past weekend in Pittsburgh where they fell to Duquesne five out of two matches and Pittsburgh six out of one. The women will also compete this weekend against Eastern Michigan on Friday and Bowling Green on Saturday. Good luck to both teams this weekend. The swim and dive team had a busy weekend as they competed in both the dual meet in, at IUPUI and the Butler Invitational. On Saturday, the women came out victorious, 153-147 to over the Jaguars, their first dual meet victory of the season. Victoria Rose, Tiffany St. Gills, Ida Urinovich, and Taylor Bishop each collected two first-place finishes, and Rachel Ship also had a winning touch as well. Diver Bethany Glick also took home a first-place finish in the three-meter dive. On Sunday, the Gwyn swam in the Butler Invitational, and both Mackenzie Stelter and Bethany Glick were at the top of the standings in the one- and three-meter dives, respectively. Sophomore Tiffany St. Gills touched first in the 200-yard breaststroke and second in the 100-yard breaststroke. The team will next be traveling to participate in the Illinois Quad Duels on Friday. The first race is set to begin at 4 p.m. Now, Dom, it's that time of, time of day again. It's time for the Penguin Play of the Week. We had a few nominations. Yep. Do you have any, any guesses? Any guesses? You know, it's either going to be that Hey Good Dunk or the Braun Hartfield reverse layup. So All right, one so of the two. You got a 50-50 shot. All right, let's see what we got. Well, it's going to be a skip pass from Cam to Braun Hartfield, and it's going to be an up and Whoop! under our first layup from Braun Hartfield. Dom, you got it right. Well, 50% right. 50%. All right, don't give me that much credit. But look at this. With the contest, able to move his body mid-air, not easy to do at all. Huge play by Braun. Up and under for the bucket. The double adjust, something that he could probably do in his sleep, and something maybe you could do as well. He got some height on me, so definitely I could not. Now, see, Chris, off. last time I did that, it hit the rim, bounce back, broke my nose. So broke your nose. It explains why it's so crooked now. It's you all, have an I, answer. It, it, it's you have an answer little, now. Like, look at me straight. Look at me straight. I, I can tell. I can tell. Yeah. Can you the, tell? Can anyone else tell? So now you now you know. Now you, everybody knows. Thank you, basketball. Don't don't trust basketball. <laughs> that's the that's the moral of the story here. Moral of the story. Well, that just about does it for all of us here on the Penguin Rundown. For news, highlights, and more, be sure to check us out on YSUSports.com and also be sure to follow us on social media at Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat at Penguin Rundown 1. We're your hosts this week, Chris Colella, Dom Joseph. Now we're going to leave you with a little honorable mention play of the week action. It's going to be Bill Coupler, who came away with $12,000 Saturday night. Check out how he did just that.